Okay, the final part of our perpendicular polarized problem is to find the magnitudes of all of these fields. So up here I have written the coefficient, the reflection coefficient for the perpendicular polarized case and the transmission coefficient for the perpendicular polarized case. You can double check these in your textbook. Normally you would be given E incident, and in this case it is EY incident. So let's assume that this is given. Then E y reflected is e y incident times the reflection coefficient for the perpendicular polarized case and e y transmitted is the transmission coefficient times e y incident. So you take the incident field, you multiply it by the reflection coefficient to get the magnitude of the reflected field, and you multiply it by the transmission coefficient to get the magnitude of the, re of the transmitted field. Now let's look at the magnetic field. We have H, and that is perpendicularly polarized. It's in the X and Z direction. If we wanted the incident value, we might remember that the magnetic field is always the incident electric field divided by eta. So if we knew this, we were given this, we'd simply plug it in here, divide it by eta 1, and that would give us the magnitude of the magnetic field. Then, if we wanted the reflected field, we would take H reflected, and that would simply be E reflected divided by eta 1, and H transmitted would just be E transmitted divided by eta 2. This is the correct value here. So this gives us the magnitude of each of these fields. Let's simply plug it in. This is the the reflection coefficient for the perpendicular case times E Y incident. This is the transmitted field for the perpendicular case times E Y incident. This is E Y incident divided by eta 1. Now we need the reflected field, so it is the reflection coefficient in the perpendicular case times E Y incident divided by eta 1. And now we need the transmitted one. Let's take the transmission coefficient times E Y incident, and we're going to divide that by eta 2. So this is now a complete picture of our electric fields propagating for a perpendicular polarized case and the magnetic fields perpendicular polarized case. I'm going to take a picture of this board so that you're able to use all of these constants. Please double check them with your book. And then let's also talk about how to change if you didn't have Z or x, but perhaps you had other vectors. And then I'm also going to talk about the parallel polarized electric field case.